Take a look at this image. The tiny blue dot we can make out on it is nothing other than our Earth, viewed from a distance of around 900 million kilometers. This fascinating photo not only gives us a completely new perspective on our home planet, but also a vivid insight into the working world of the Cassini space probe. In the nearly 20 years that the unmanned spacecraft spent in space, it provided us with countless spectacular images of Saturn and its natural satellites. But our knowledge of the iconic ringed planet has also been significantly enhanced by the successful mission. Together with you, we would like to take a closer look at the exciting time when Cassini was in close contact with Saturn. What images were taken during this ambitious project and what secrets were uncovered? These and other questions are to be answered in today's video. Excited about the groundbreaking discoveries and unique spectacles in the universe? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click the bell for regular updates on these exciting topics. By giving us a thumbs up, you're motivating us and showing that we can keep you engaged with the content of our videos. Departure to Saturn It is October 15, 1997, when the sky above Launch Complex 40 in California is veiled by thick clouds of smoke. Scientists are fascinated as they take one last look at the Titan 4B launch vehicle, which will carry not only the coupled Cassini and Huygens space probes, but also the experts' thirst for knowledge into the gigantic expanses of space. After years of development and construction and three previous Saturn flybys, the task now was to take a full look at the ringed planet as part of a large-scale research mission. As already briefly mentioned, however, Cassini was not the only passenger on board the launch vehicle. The ESA-designed lander Huygens was also dispatched that day to the realms of the planetary ring bearer. Unlike Cassini, the nearly 705-pound craft had been designed for a very specific purpose, namely, to explore Saturn's moon Titan. With a diameter of 3,200 miles, the satellite easily outshines all other companions of the ringed planet. In the list of all moons in the solar system, Titan is surpassed in size only by Jupiter's satellite Ganymede. Huygens was thus entrusted with the task of determining the atmospheric composition of the mighty icy moon. It was also necessary to investigate the gas distribution in the atmosphere and to look for further organic compounds. Landing on the surface of the satellite, its structure and composition were to be recorded, and conclusions drawn about the internal composition of the Moon. In the same breath, Cassini would study the other satellites in the Saturn system. Some of Saturn's moons, now known to number 82, were to be uncovered during the research mission. But of course, the ringed planet also occupied a central role in the scientific investigations. Before the launch of the Cassini-Huygens mission, terrestrial experts face some exciting questions. What dynamic processes are taking place in the rings? How do the ring orbits interact with Saturn's magnetosphere, atmosphere, and ionosphere? Also, the global winds, the cloud structures, and the inner composition of the ring planet should be deciphered in detail. On July 1st, 2004, the time had finally come. After several flyby maneuvers at Venus, Earth, and Jupiter, Cassini finally entered Saturn's orbit, and the time of uncertainty gave way to the search for answers. Amazing Insights The Cassini-Huygens mission added seven previously unknown moons of Saturn to the star charts. Before Cassini entered the immediate vicinity of the ringed planet, the probe had completed a flyby of the moon Phoebe, even a brief glance at the celestial body is enough to recognize that it's very different from conventional satellites. Its porous texture and unusually dark, ice-covered surface suggest that Phoebe is in fact a captured comet nucleus originating in the remote Kuiper Belt. The Moon's crater-strewn exterior also suggests that we are dealing with a relic from the early stages of the solar system, which has an impressive age of 4.5 billion years. Once the breathtaking images of Phoebe were in the can, it was time for a spectacular maneuver, the flight through Saturn's rings. Since the thousands and thousands of orbits are home to ice crystals and dust grains, as well as rock fragments, the ring crossing was anything but harmless. By a clever trick, 
in which the probe was aligned in such a way that its antenna acted like an improvised protective shield, Cassini managed to master this undertaking unscathed. Meanwhile, the spacecraft succeeded in taking high-resolution images of the ring structures at close range. What looks like a huge closed structure from a distance turns out to be a complex composite of more than 100,000 components. Between 30 and 330 feet thick, Saturn's outermost ring has a diameter of over 620,000 miles. The innermost orbit begins 4,000 miles above Saturn's surface and has a diameter of 83,000 miles. As we can see in this Cassini image, the ring structures cast a visible shadow on Saturn. In the same breath, the rings are cast in the shadow of their planetary center. New Findings in addition to the spectacular images of the rings, Cassini's mission also provided us with some new information about the material composition of the orbiting orbits. In the run-up to the mission, experts had still suspected that the complex composite consisted mainly of ice. However, Cassini provided evidence that the main component is in the form of dust, which has amazing parallels to the surface composition of the moon Phoebe. In addition, we now know that the rings are much more sharply separated from each other than previously thought. The reason for the gaps between the individual orbits can be found in the gravitational interaction with the numerous Saturn satellites. Some smaller satellites, called Shepard's moons, follow their orbits directly in the gaps and at the edges of the ring structure, thus stabilizing its overall structure. One of these cosmic shepherds is Prometheus, the unusually shaped celestial body acts as a stabilizer of the delicate F-ring. Huge Hexagon The cloud formations we find in Saturn's atmosphere are composed primarily of crystallized ammonia. What spectacular formations were created there over time was already revealed in the early 1980s. At that time, the Voyager probes succeeded in detecting an almost perfect hexagon at the planet's north pole. Cassini also took a detailed look at this amazingly geometric storm formation in the course of the mission. With a depth of over 60 miles, the hexagon has a gigantic diameter of almost 15,000 miles. The hexagon moves around its own axis every 10 hours and 40 minutes. Between the years 2013 and 2017, the experts also registered a striking change in color. While the structure had previously appeared predominantly blue, it subsequently changed to a yellow-brown hue. The scientists suspect that this play of colors is related to the change of seasons. The increased incidence of sunlight creates a haze that accompanies the amazing color change. Why the oversized structure is in the shape of a hexagon of all things has not been conclusively explained. One explanation is that the hexagon is surrounded by a ring of storms moving in the opposite direction. In this way, the characteristic shape could be created and stabilized. The Bizarre Titan World As mentioned at the beginning, Huygens was designed specifically for the exploration of Titan. On December 25, 2004, it was time for the lander to say goodbye to Cassini. Three targeted blasts and 20 days later, Huygens finally headed for one of the most bizarre lunar worlds in the solar system, Titan's surface. The conditions prevailing on Saturn's largest companion can be described without equivocation as extreme. Under the dense atmosphere, the pressure is about twice as high as on Earth. The average surface temperature of the icy moon is a bone-chilling minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit. As a result of this unforgiving initial situation, Huygens was only able to send data from the surface for 72 minutes. Despite this, this short time span was sufficient to significantly increase our knowledge of Titan. And this despite the fact that half of the 1,215 images were lost during reception. For example, we now know that the moon's atmosphere is composed mainly of nitrogen and methane. In addition, evidence of volcanic activity was found. In contrast to the natural spectacles on our Earth, however, boiling hot lava and ash are not hurled into the air but a mixture of water ice and ammonia. The fact that no isotopes of the types argon-36 and 38 could be detected suggests that the satellite must once have lost its entire atmosphere. And indeed, 
Analysis of the nitrogen molecules showed that the gas envelope of the satellite was five times denser in the past. The unexpectedly dark surface was again reminiscent of wet sand in its texture. Regarding the natural landscape, no other celestial body of the solar system is so similar to the Earth as Titan. Accordingly, the lunar relief boasts the most diverse formations, including dunes, valleys, and full-grown mountains. In addition, our home planet and Saturn's moon share another characteristic feature, the presence of gigantic fluid accumulations. What water is on Earth, rivers, lakes, and even smaller seas of liquid methane are on Titan? In terms of landscape formation, methane on Saturn's moon plays the same role as water on our terrestrial home. Prior to the mission, experts had believed that the methane lakes existed only in the cooler, polar regions of the moon. However, Cassini's infrared images showed that the liquefied hydrocarbons also exist along Titan's equator. The largest methane lakes are called Mare or Punjamare and reach areas of more than 38,000 square miles. While some of these formations are fed by underground tributaries, others draw their supply from a regular methane rain. But that's not all. It is suspected that a gigantic ocean of liquid water may be hiding beneath the surface. Although Titan lies outside the habitable zone, the existence of precursors of life is not ruled out. The Grand Finale On September 15, 2017, the Cassini mission culminated in a spectacular finale. Since an extension of the project was no longer possible due to the lack of fuel, the probe would ultimately merge with the same object it had extensively explored over the past 13 years. The decision to let Cassini burn up inside the ringed planet, however, had another background. This was to prevent terrestrial microorganisms that adhered to the equipment from contaminating the moon's Titan or Enceladus. Before Cassini disappeared from the scene for all time, it pointed its antenna towards Earth one last time and transmitted the data collected up to the end of the mission directly to its earthly home. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the exciting Cassini-Huygens mission? We're already looking forward to your comments. Thanks for your interest. Take care, and we'll see you next time.